The scope of this paint booth is for hobby use only. Specifically, this paint booth is for use with Createx Fast Color Badger type non flappable paints. Use this paint booth at your own risk. The painting of large projects like auto restoration, stuff of that nature, is well beyond the scope of what this paint booth is meant for. You need to be quite careful with the fan that you buy or use. You don't want one that has like a thermostat or any other goofy weird switches and stuff in it that might cause arcing. The two fans listed below I have tested extensively and I have not had any safety issues whatsoever with either one of those fans. You need to have a place to do your hobby painting. What we don't want is some big, bulky, inflexible piece of furniture taking up space. Plus, we don't want a paint booth that takes an inordinate amount of time and money to build. So we're going to start with a box fan. The only requirement is that the power cord does not come out of the back of the fan. We want a fan where the cord comes out the bottom. The next thing you need is a 20 by 20 by 1 ACE green furnace filter. For whatever reason, these seem to work the best. Then you're going to want to duct tape the furnace filter to the sucky side of the fan with the arrow pointing towards the fan. This is where it will become very apparent why you can't use a box fan that has the powered card coming out of the back. No special tools needed here, just your hands. I often like to get duct tape at McFrugal's or the dollar store. Find a coupon and splurge on the furnace filter at ACE. Now we need wings so we can divert over spray and fumes into the furnace filter. The other reason we need wings is so that we have an excellent place to test airbrush spray patterns and clean out our airbrushes on. Wings are pretty easy to make. You just need scissors, cardboard, and a utility knife. If you buy a brand new box fan, just keep the box and make the wings out of it. The nice thing with the construction thus far is that there should be no glass ceiling to create said paint booth based on your socioeconomic class. The end result of all this frantic trimming are two to four inch flaps along two adjacent edges. This will make sense when we get to assembling the booth. But essentially one duct tapes to the fan and the other one duct tapes to whatever table or piece of plywood on saw horses, whatever it is we're trying to set this thing up on. I can't really take 100% credit for this paint booth idea. I've added a lot of things to this paint booth, but I remember in Cub Scouts they told you to duct tape a furnace filter to a box fan and paint your Pinewood Derby car in front of it. The idea of duct taping a furnace filter to a box fan is not a new idea. So now it's time to assemble. In this example, I'm just assembling on top of a small folding table, a scrap piece of plywood, OSB, or particle board on top of some sawhorses works fine too. Uh, try to set up on something that no one's going to get overly excited if you spill paint on it. And again, we're just using duct tape to hold this thing together. I've painted a lot of bodies with this exact setup. You'll be pretty amazed how well this works versus the moderate monetary and labor investments you've made. What I love about this paint booth is that you can set it up and tear it down really quickly. You can also store all the pieces of it very easily and then you can use the space for different projects. You can also reutilize the materials for other projects if you lose interest in painting. One upgrade I recommend is putting magnetic tape on the wing flaps that go up against the box fan housing. Then you don't have to mess with duct tape and it holds the paint booth together very securely. If you're lucky, watch the dollar store or McCrew wheels for magnetic tape and 10 to 15 pound outdoor tape. Usually you can find a coupon for Ace and buy your tape there. I get far more gratification finding the stuff I need to build things at the dollar store or McCrew wheels. For whatever reason, the adhesive on the magnetic tape does not stick to cardboard very well. I find two strips of outdoor tape make it stick to the cardboard very well. The 15 pound tape can be kind of difficult to remove the backing from. Aside from diverting overspray and fumes into the filter, the wings are great for testing your airbrush on. Sometimes it's beneficial to shoot some paint on the wings before your body to make sure your airbrush is working properly. When you're getting ready to change colors, flushing out excess remnant paint on the wings is also very handy. When you're flushing the airbrush out when cleaning between colors or at the end of your painting session, having the wings to blast the material on your airbrush on is very advantageous also. When the paint thinner or paint dries, you're just left with cardboard with paint on it, not a jug full of hazardous waste. When the wings become trash, check with your trash services regulations, but you might be able to just throw the wings in the trash and not have to mess with the disposal of a jug um, with a waste jug full of hazardous waste.
The filter of fan is fantastic because you don't have to mess with duct tape to change your filter. You just slip it in and out of the slot. I prefer to use a sheet good sitting on top of sawhorses to put my paint booth on. You can smell as much paint as you want on it. You can also screw strips of wood to it to hold down your wings and get rid of the duct tape altogether. The strips of wood and screws make an unusually solid contraption and you can screw a thermometer to it also. One disadvantage to OSB is that you'll need a cutting mat to draw or do precision cutting with a hobby knife. I also like to knock the corners off. It seems that when you do this and then run your knee into the paint booth it hurts less. This is pretty self-explanatory. You'll need a hairdryer to paint RC car bodies. Put a hole in the sheet good and you'll have a fantastic place to put your hairdryer. You need something to sit on. Find something cheap that no one will care if you get paint on it. I like thermometers in the painting area. This way I can make sure that it's between 55 and 85 degrees when I am painting. You can build a nicer paint booth, but if you try and make it too perfect and too complicated, you'll never get it done and you'll never get around to painting. This paint booth works really well, it stores easily, and this paint booth is for hobby use only. It has been scientifically proven that by subscribing to this channel, you will become marginally less marginal. Bye!